Today's topic is recruitment on a shoestring, and our speaker today is Lavelle Deer, and she is an HR consultant, uh, specifically with recruitment and retention for both employees, students, interns, co-ops, and volunteers within the nonprofit sector. Uh, but she does work with small businesses as well, and even individuals looking at a career change. So many different services uh, within HR, and has definitely seen a lot of different things. Uh, love to throw it over to Lavelle at this point in time uh, to learn all about recruitment on a shoestring. Thanks, Carla, and welcome everyone who have joined us today. Uh, like Carla mentioned, we're going to be talking about hiring on a shoestring. Um, so we all know that our people um, are very important to us and they are who make our business successful. And as a small business, um, you have limited time and limited resources. Um, so some of the things that we can, we're going to go over today will help you to determine how to find the right people and how to have them interested with um, the time and cost effective strategies. Um, so we're going to go over uh, the hiring process, why it is critical, uh, how can you make a hiring plan and a strategy, what is the importance of job description, branding, and a good job listing, why is that important, what are the different sources um, um, that you have um, for sourcing uh, new candidates, uh, as well as some innovative sourcing methods, the interview process, the testing, whether it is for you or not, um, and what else do we have here? Oh. Um, as well as um, uh, you know, whether going to uh, a job, sorry. Uh, reference checking, what is the importance, and on uh, onboarding and retention. Next slide. Hiring process, why is it so critical, um, and what can we do? Now, first thing is that we need to perform a gap analysis, keeping your business strategy and future goals in mind. How many employees do you currently have, and what would be your requirement based on uh, when you grow more and based on your growth prospects for the future? Uh, when you feel the need for some talent and you want to hire, sometimes the best thing is to step back and see if, you, uh, if, if the best answer would be for you to hire or to build the capabilities of your existing team. Um, in that case, then you would need to invest uh, in training and development activities. But if you do decide to hire, uh, you must check out the implications and the effects of hiring a new employee, especially if this is your first time you're going to be hiring. Um, it is a good idea to talk to your accountant, um, take care of some tax and legal, make sure you're clear about the difference between uh, hiring an employee versus a contractor. Um, so your accountant uh, would probably be a very good resource for you to tap on. Next slide. Hiring plan and strategy. Now, the statistics says uh, a bad hire has been estimated to be four to six times the employee's salary. Um, so you need to hire based on the competencies that will be in the best interest for your business. Uh, now, the, do, uh, the old uh, ways of hiring do work, but in today's environment, um, employees are looking for something more. They're looking for jobs that will fit their lifestyles. Um, they're looking for more flexibility. They're looking for more benefits. Um, uh, and more than anything, they're looking for uh, a sense of purpose. So uh, we, so, somehow it feels like we need to sell our company uh, as one of the best places to work in the industry or in the geographic area. Uh, so we need to plan and have a strategy. Now the first steps would be to write down some key attributes of your company based on your company culture, and that would make it attractive for the potential employees. Um, now, in just a few minutes, we're going to talk more about the company culture. Uh, and um, some key points that you should keep in mind uh, is who are your current leaders? Uh, how, how are they fitting into, the, into your present culture, into your organization? What do they like about working in your company? Uh, how are they keeping themselves motivated and engaged? Once you've identified all of that, um, you will have a strategy to recruit the best people for your organization, the ones who would best work best in your interest, in your company's interest. Um, uh, you then need to come up with a hiring plan um, based on your business plan. Maybe you have a three-year business plan um, to meet your goals uh, going forward, um, how many people you think you would need to hire. So all that would go in your hiring plan and your uh, strategy for hiring. 
Next slide. Job description, very, very important. It's a very important tool. Um, so if you may create, um, say, a, an avatar for a perfect employee, what their qualifications should be, what are the competencies that you're looking for, uh, what are the, uh, the responsibilities that they're going to take over. Um, and the more detailed that job description is, the easier it will be to select uh, the new hire that you're looking for. Um, it does not just have to be a description of duties to be performed. Um, it should maybe have um, set out a purpose for the job, where the job is going to fit into the organization, um, so which means who is reporting to who, so hierarchy, uh, as well as some main accountabilities of the person, some responsibilities. Um, a job description, why I say is very important, because it can serve more than one purpose. Um, so for recruiting, for instance, it would definitely tell the potential um, job candidates and job applicants what, um, what are the, give, give all the essential information about the job, and as well as the recruiting team. They can determine who is the right kind of the person for this job, um, what are the kind of duties that they need to do. Um, and the next next thing it, it can be helpful for is um, it provides an important part of the contract. So when you have the contract signed up with the employee, all of these components uh, can go into the contract. Uh, and another most important use of the job description, it can form the basis for your performance appraisal going forward. Um, so objectives can be set which are based on the job description, and then those can be reference points for your performance uh, appraisal. Next slide. Branding, employer branding. So not only for your marketing, but for uh, it is important these days in the market to have an employer branding. Why is this needed? Um, basically to attract top talent. Uh, and top talent that fits into your organizational culture, um, which is going to help you to maintain a competitive edge with your competitors. And that is going to translate into an increase in profit margin. Um, now, the main thing is to take action uh, and define its better and its best interest of your organization to define your own brand rather than letting the market define it for you. Now, a brand could be anything from, um, say, for instance, offering flexible hours. Uh, competitive benefits, it could be ensuring a good work-life balance, it could be uh, paying more attention to employee safety, any of those. So establish um, your um, uh, Now, if you already have an established or a known culture, uh, and especially if the people uh, and other than the employees know about it, your main task is to maintain it. Uh, if the employees all know about it, but the outsiders are not aware of it, uh, what your culture is. So then you have to discover ways to how, how you can publicly exploit that and what the, comp uh, about what the company does well, what you want to be known for. And if you're relatively new and you do not have an established corporate culture, then you need to analyze, um, establish your own culture. Um, you know, you need to involve, uh, that would involve a combination of internal discovery and assessment of external discovery. Um, so I'll give you an example. For example, your company is progressive, it is innovative, and uh, it is technology forward. Um, now you can attract uh, candidates who have the same qualities. How you can do that? Maybe use social media to advertise and engage the candidates. LinkedIn and Twitter are great tools and great sources for um, uh, candidates that you might want to hire. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, more uh, about these uh, platforms in detail uh, in just about a minute. And the, a very good start is, and the easiest way is, uh, you know, the, as a first step, you, what you can do is you can have a great job listing. So when you have a great job listing, it is going to attract uh, some good candidates. Next slide. Hello, next slide. Sorry, I had changed it. It, it went to sourcing options. Oh, yeah, now it changed. Thank oh. you. <laughs> um, so there are a lot of sourcing options we have. Um, Workopolis, Monster, and there are a lot of other jo job boards uh, that you can place your job posting on. Uh, I'm sure most of you are aware of those. Uh, Craigslist and Kijiji. 
those are another, uh, another two platforms where you can place uh, free job postings. Then another source could be college and universities. Now you need to uh, think about uh, whether your business uh, would be uh, able to uh, hire those people, whether you, uh, they, they, are, they would be the right kind of candidates for your business. Um, so for example, you are, say for example you are a startup IT company. Um, you can work with these new grads who know a lot about software development. They've written a lot of uh, code doing their projects. Um, and that could be a very cost-effective way for you. Um, and um, of course, there are, we all know there are a lot of large companies who hire from uh, colleges and universities, and then they train them as per their own requirements. So you need to see if that is for you. Um, then we have job fairs. Now, um, you have to see if that is going to be worth your time. It all depends on what positions you're hiring for and what kind of candidates that the particular job fair will attract. Um, so you'd need to do some research. Referrals. Now, we can never underestimate the power of referrals. Just as it goes for the job seekers uh, as well, it can go for businesses as well. Reach out to friends, reach out to family, uh, and reach out on the social media, uh, especially if this is your first time hiring. Uh, a very good resource, um, uh, you know. And if you have other employees already in the um, in your organization, um, ask them for uh, ask them for referrals. Um, they they wouldn't want to jeopardize their own credibility, so obviously they're going to refer people who they think can fit in very well in the organization. And uh, not to forget, of course, to attach a referral reward for the employees. That is very important. Uh, now I have a tip for you here. Uh, when you go out networking and uh, you know, getting involved in the community, most people go out there for, mainly for new business, to get new business connections and new business leads. Now here is one thing. The job seekers also go to those networking events. So how about keep an eye on um, you know, any prospective new employees there. You don't know who you might be wanting to hire in the future. So uh, keep that in mind next time you're going networking. Next slide. Some innovative sourcing methods. Now, um, there are a lot of uh, social media uh, platforms out there. And um, there, we need to find out a way to uh, you know, entice these applicants that are on the social media. And um, this, change, this change is already here. You know, we cannot avoid it. So it's better that we get proactive and um, get active on social media. Um, use it for recruiting. Lots of, uh, lots of advantages to that. Um, there's the benefit of belonging to a community. Um, you can use it for live chats, video handshakes. Uh, basically, you can have uh, an in-person experience, but digitally. Um, so I've listed a few of these here. Of course, there are a lot more, um, but we're going to talk about these few. Um, the first one I have listed is LinkedIn. Now everybody knows LinkedIn. Uh, most professionals are on LinkedIn, and it's an incredible free resource you have. Um, uh, you know, it has a, a, an amazing feature which I find, which is called, which is the advanced people search. So you can put in the territory, you can put in the industry, you can put in some keywords, and um, you know, you, a lot of candidates who fit into that category, they show up and um, you can source those, chat with them, uh, send out invites, um, figure out, uh, so basically passive uh, candidates there. Um, and of course, putting in keywords, it will take a lot of, uh, a little bit of um, experimentation. So uh, maybe you need to change the keywords if you've put Pre-sales, maybe you can just put sales. Um, if you put, say, for example, FAE, which is, I think, uh, an engineering designation, if that is not working, you, you want to hire an engineer, um, you can maybe just change that and put engineer there. Maybe broaden your um, geographic area that is mentioned. So a little bit of experimenting with the keywords, uh, and um, that is a very good resource. Um, now, another thing about LinkedIn is that you can contact those potential candidates, right? Just like the job seekers ask for introductions, you can see the second degree, third degree connections and um, reach out to the candidates, ask for introductions from your connections. Um, and then join groups. 
there are the groups with people in that industry uh, participate in that discussion in the discussions that are going on engage any potential candidates uh, it's a huge database of professionals so leverage it and um, of course it will definitely depend on the position that you're hiring for uh, whether those candidates would be on LinkedIn or not uh, the next one is Facebook. We all know about Facebook. You talk of social media, the first thing that comes to mind is Facebook. And the reason is there are so many people on Facebook. And I'm sure you have a company page on Facebook. Um, now, you can use it to build a talent community. Engage the candidates. Build your online brand. Uh, post stuff which is related to, the, to your business that people can talk about. Um, Facebook has a feature where you, they can go and like a particular brand. Then they like to mention that in their status updates. So job seekers uh, sometimes also add their professional information to, the, to their profiles. So use all of that and uh, maybe design a beautiful careers page and have a link to your um, careers page on your website. Just today, um, Facebook announced its, its job board. So this is going to bring in a new era of recruiting for sure. Um, so the article that I read, it says uh, that, that the page uh, allows users to search for jobs by location, industry, skill, uh, and the candidates can apply to them directly through Facebook. And then they can share the jobs on their social network. So I'm you know, quite, quite curious to try that out and see how that works. Uh, the next one I have is Twitter. Uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with Twitter. It's microblogging. Um, so you can have you know, uh, a small message about the job that uh, you're planning to hire for in about um, less than 140 characters because uh, after that you can add a link um, to, uh, of your job posting. Wherever you have the job posting, you can add the link to the, uh, at the end of it. And uh, you know, people can um, look at the job posting when they see the tweet. Um, or say, for example, you are um, at a, at a say, say exhibition or an expo. Say, for example, you are at a sales tech expo. Um, you can tweet saying, stop by our career booth at the sales tech expo in so-and-so city. Um, so it's again about um, you know, building a community. Um, you can search by people. You can search by location and even hashtags. So um, say, for example, you are looking for people in Toronto. Then, or you are wanting to post your position only in Toronto and GTA, use those hashtags. People who are looking into that area, they are going to see your tweet and uh, look at the job posting. Now, um, there are companies like Jobvite and Tweet My Jobs, and there's a few others that help businesses target their tweets uh, to a particular audience. So uh, there are lots of avenues. You can participate in chats, uh, which are at particular times on a particular day, and you can schedule that. Um, of course, you need to know uh, what is your goal and uh, which kind of candidates that you are attracting. Next one is Pinterest. Uh, this is another platform for, that the recruiters these days are exploring to find new candidates. Um, how it works is that uh, Pinterest users, users can create boards to organize their pictures into different themes and events. Um, that can tell you a lot about the candidate's personality. And on your side, um, you can, uh, you know, when you uh, have to fill a new job, uh, create a new board. Fill it up with um, pictures and videos. Uh, explain your, um, you know, your job in an interesting way. Uh, so I'll give you an example. For example, if you're a marketing company and you're looking for a creative director, uh, maybe you can post some clips or images from some popular films and some of your own branding to tell a story about the job instead of just uh, uh, you know, a typical wordy advertisement uh, job posting that you can post. It just, it's just more trendy and um, you can catch the attention of the people. So again, um, that, that is one platform that, you, that can be used for both kinds of brandings, uh, for your marketing brand, for your product or your service, as well as for your employer branding. Um, Instagram. Uh, this is a phone app for iPhone and Android. Um, the users can take pictures and add filters and then share these uh, edited pictures um, via Facebook, Twitter, and some other platforms. Um, so again, it's all about uh, building your own brand. Um, 
make sure you have a high quality profile picture if you're using Instagram. Uh, have a link to your website. Um, have your current employees follow the company page. Uh, that that is just going to build the momentum, and um, you know this can help you seek out some passive uh, passive talent. You you can even on Instagram you can. Um, Search using username names, ha hashtags, um, and uh, Instagram also has a partnership with Foursquare. So when you post a picture, um, they have an option. You know, if anybody posts a picture, they have an option to tag it to a location. So maybe, for instance, you push, uh, you you can place um, hashtag Toronto, and that's how your uh, location can be tracked. Again, can be used for both kinds of branding for your product service or even for employer branding. Last one that I have mentioned here is Google+. Um, that's a combination of the best elements of Facebook and Twitter. Um, you form circles and place similar interest people in the same circle. Uh, and it's again the same uh, what we have seen for Pinterest, for Instagram, um, you know, just creating a brand um, by visual messaging, adding videos, and reaching out to the candidates where they're going to be hanging around. Um, again, same uh, because it is a very, very new platform. Uh, there are a lot of fresh profiles. And um, what has been seen is that because these are fresh and new uh, profiles people are creating on Google+, um, some of them are putting their career information, and so that can be used um, you know, to contact those people. Um, now, the important thing in all of these, using all of this social media is um, to convey a consistent message. Uh, it, you will have to do a lot of research, figure out which, which platform would be most cost effective, most time effective for you. Um, but the main point is to convey a consistent mes message. Uh, of course, you will have to choose your platform based on the target audience uh, who are going, just, just like your marketing strategy. You, know, you have to target your audience. Next slide. Gamification. Now, this is another new trend coming in. Um, I'm sure, like many people, when you think of the word gamification, you're probably thinking, oh, a whole lot of unproductive people sitting on their desks playing video games, right? No. Uh, gamification is being used. It's about you know using the game attributes to drive game-like behavior in a non-game context, and then applying it to business tasks. Um, so without giving out any names, I will tell you one large global organization um, is using that as a national simulation to create their employer brand awareness in schools. Now, students uh, work as teams to solve a virtual business simulation. The teachers are liking it. They're very happy, and the kids, they love it. Why? Because it's all about competition. It's about engaging them. It's about they're playing a game, so uh, you know, there's a lot of collaboration. And it's, it, it's, it's talking to the kids in a digital language, which is the language that they really understand best these days. Um, so a, a few large organizations are using gamification for recruiting, for engaging their employees, and even for marketing. Um, Next is crowdsourcing. Now, um, that just means that a job which is traditionally performed by an employee is outsourced, but outsourced to an undefined large group of people, um, usually online uh, people. Uh, a very famous example, of course, we all know is Wikipedia. Instead of uh, uh, hiring writers or editors, they gave it out to a crowd of people who have the ability and are uh, experts in their field to create the information on their own. And what we have, we have a, a really good comprehensive uh, encyclopedia, and we use it so many times. Most of us use it every day. Now, for your sake, um, I'll give you an example how you can use it. Say, for example, you want to have a logo designed. Um, you can tell a crowd of designers how much you will pay and what is your deadline for it. You will get a lot of who, you know, people who are interested in doing that. Um, they will send in their entries, if you may. Um, and you can choose from the different designs that you, that you receive and obviously pay the one that you chose for, from. Um, recruiting from boomerangs. Boomerang, of course, just the word defines it. Um, performing, uh, you know, identifying corporate alumni who have either um, purposely targeted or brought back 
brought back into the organization or who want to return on their own. Uh, boomerang efforts are said to be the highest on ROIs, so on return on investment and recruiting, they're said to be the highest, basically because the cost per hire is very low. The time and the effort that you invest in getting to know the candidate, having them adjust into the corporate culture or your company culture, training them, all of that is very low. They already know it, and they just come back and get started. Um, I have three tips for you here. Um, the first one is you must figure out how people are sharing your job postings, both internally and externally, and try and leverage those sources. Well, the second one is have a consistent message across all platforms that you use that we just talked about anyway. Uh, and the third is to figure out the candidate perspective. So create a, a, a clear picture on uh, who you're trying to reach out, where they hang around. Sometimes different professionals, they hang out um, you know, on different social platforms. So be mindful of all that. Next slide. Interview process. Very important. Have some benchmarks ready before you get into the interviews. Um, this is just going to help you to form relevant questions as well as uh, help you to compare different candidates that you uh, are going to interview. Tie it in with, a, with your employer brand. Um, you know, just the example that we took earlier, if your company is progressive, it's technolo technology forward, um, show it by using technology in maybe your interviewing process as well. So, for example, um, use Skype if you can. It's time, effect time effective, cost effective for you as well as for the candidate. Um, and um, uh, then conducting the interviews. So don't ask legal questions. No, sorry, illegal questions, um, and use strategic questions based on the job description. Uh, incorporate some questions that yield answers which are deeply telling. Um, for example, one question could be, uh, tell me about the toughest decision you had to make in the last six months. Now, the purpose of this question is it will evaluate the candidate's reasoning ability, uh, their problem-solving skills, um, and maybe even how much they are willing to take an intelligent risk. So try and turn the interview into a fact-based conversation. You will always get more out of the interview. And um, this will you know, help you to identify if there is any disconnect between the candidate's resume and the actual experience and the qualifications that they have. Um, another important thing is to prepare an interview guide. Now, basically, uh, just a few things that you that needs to be done consistently, and that would form your uh, interview guide. Train the managers. Um, there are a lot of uh, managers that might be uh, doing the hiring, um, and so train them how to be good interviewers, body language, and what kind of questions that they can ask, um, but obviously stay consistent. Next slide. Testing. Um, that could be an option, especially if you're hiring for technical positions, say, for example, programming. So maybe you can give them a quick example. They can write some small code for you. Um, if you're hiring for sales positions, uh, maybe you can have them do some mock presentations, um, say, uh, why the business ought to choose a particular accounting software, and you know, give them two, three minutes to prepare. And that can be, the testing can be as simple as that. It, um, doesn't have to be a written exam or sitting on the computer and doing some stuff for a longer time. Next slide. Reference checking. Very important in your um, it, recruitment process. Um, there is no, I just want to let you know that there is no legal implication on asking a prospective candidate for their names of references and the permission to contact them. Why you need to do that? The idea is to verify the information. Now, the employee has given you some information, uh, including the qualitative um, information on performance, weaknesses, skills. All of that information you can find out from uh, if you have a good uh, reference checking process. It does take a little bit of time, but I'm sure it's going to be really worth it. Um, and again, just as with other processes, many other processes, it is beneficial to have a standard reference checking format and some standard questions. So that is just going to help you make an educated decision on uh, you know, comparing uh, two or more candidates. Um, and of course, your questions should be focused on um, performance and some aspects of their personality. All right. 
Next slide. Onboarding and retention. Now, um, onboarding plans go beyond simple orientation. Um, this is important because once you've hired, you've invested so much time and so much money into uh, hiring a, a, a particular employee, you want to have them uh, stay with you and to reduce the turnover rate, right? So uh, it's important that the onboarding plan goes beyond just a simple orientation. Um, so basically the idea should be, the intention should be to make the new employees familiar with the overall goals of the company, uh, support them with their first projects and with their initial projects because the purpose is to make them successful in their earlier days of the, in the organization. Um, when you create an onboarding plan, is focus on the needs of the new hires. Uh, it is going to pay off and reduce uh, the turnover and encourage the workers to stay with the organization for a longer time. Next slide. All right. Uh, conclusion. So I'm just going to sum it up all uh, that we've uh, talked about today. Um, so uh, what I'd like to say is don't leave your employee recruiting to chance. Um, recruiting is just not about hiring a large number of people or hiring them cheaply. Uh, it's about uh, hiring individuals who will stay with you and who will become top performers. Uh, plan your activities, measure the results, and have an ongoing strategy. Um, focus on the processes to reduce your recruiting costs in the long run. So make use of the free resources that you have. Leverage that and leverage your time and cost investment in social media. Work on retaining your employees. It would be very cost effective for your business. Um, and with that, I come to the end of this presentation. I'm um, just wondering if anybody has any questions. That was great. Um, I actually have some questions, but we'll let everyone to start typing in in the Q&A section if they have any. Uh, number one is uh, you were talking about body language and training some of the managers. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering, uh, what is the best body language for an interviewer to uh, use in an interview? Uh, what I meant was that to judge the body language of the interviewees. So say, for example, they're sitting with their, crossed, uh, with their arms crossed, hands crossed, or legs crossed. That just shows that they might be hiding some stuff. They may not be opening up totally. So kind of you know, train them to maybe train the hiring managers to maybe uh, you know, make the environment a little easy at the beginning or even during the interview so that they, the candidate can just ease out a little and give out more information. Great. Are there any other questions out?